Okay, so today we're going to get some exponential functions and logarithms review. It's going to be a you try, I go over kind of lesson today. Let's get going. So uh, basically the concepts that we're covering today are exponential functions, so growth and decay, solving exponential equations, simplifying logarithmic functions, that's using your laws of logarithms, uh, solving logarithmic equations, and then a real world application of logarithms. So we're going to see a little bit of everything today. Um, again, we have a quiz next class. Uh, so it's imperative that you understand all of this information and make sure that you're contacting me if any of this stuff today uh, stumped you a little bit or if you weren't able to get the right answer or if you just didn't even know where to start. Contact me. It doesn't really matter. Like, I honestly don't mind. Just send me an email or, or uh, a remind message. Anyway, let's get going. So first one here. Caffeine has a half-life of 5.5 hours in the human body. A can of Monster Energy Drink has 160 milligrams of caffeine in it. Create a function that can be used to determine the amount of caffeine C in milligrams uh, in a person's system H hours after they drink a can or after they drank a can of Monster. Use your function to determine how many milligrams of caffeine to the nearest hundredth would be in a person's system 24 hours after drinking a can of Monster uh, and wonder why you can't sleep at night. Uh, anyway, so again, we're making a function for this. And then the second step of this is you're using it to solve how much would be in their system after 24 hours. Pause the video here, give it a try. All right, I'm gonna go over this. Now, in just generic terms here, when we have a growth or decay function, we always set it up as y equals a times b to the power of t over p. a is your starting value, b is what you're multiplying by each time, t is your elapsed time, so in other words, how much time has passed by, uh, and p is, I think, I think that stands for period, it basically just is how long does it take for one of these B cycles to happen? So in other words, how often are you multiplying by B? Uh, if we break it down in this case, uh, the amount of caffeine in your system after a certain amount of time, so Y, is going to equal C. Um, and I think that's really what we're looking for ultimately, because uh, at least in the second half of this, how much is in their system. So it is equal to C and that's what we're looking for. Uh, as for A, A is gonna be your starting amount. So in this case, it's 160. Uh, B is what you're multiplying by each time. This is a half-life question. Uh, half-life works just by multiplying by one half every single time. So I'm gonna change that to 0.5. Uh, and then T, which in this question it says, make sure that that's H hours. So we'll say T is equal to H. And then in the later part of the question, H is actually 24 hours, because uh, that's the elapsed time. That's how long uh, or how much time has passed. Uh, last but not least here is P. P is the time period here. Uh, in other words, it's how, how long does it take before you multiply by one half? Um, well, it's 5.5 hours, so P is 5.5. So in the first part of the question, if we're making a function that models this, we would say that C, the amount of caffeine in your body at the end, so that's usually your Y, but they just want it in different terms for whatever reason. C is equal to A, which is 160, times B, which is 0 0.5, to the power of T over P. Now, T in this case, they want it as H, as in hours. Again, I don't know why, it doesn't really matter, but whatever, H over uh, the time period, which is 5.5. So that right there is the answer to the first part of this question where you were asked to create a function. Now for the second part of the, uh, the question, we're just plugging in 24 hours into this. So C is equal to 160 times 0 0.5 to the power of 24 over 5.5. And that's gonna give us C equals to the nearest hundredth, 7.77 milligrams. So again, it's just a matter of using the, the generic uh, exponential growth or decay formula. This is a decay function because it's a half-life uh, and just filling in the blanks here. Uh, half-life ones are actually, in my opinion, more straightforward than the population growth or decay questions. Remember, if this was a population growth or decay question, it would often tell you that it's growing at a rate of some percentage. If it's growing, you need to add that percentage to one. If it's shrinking or decaying, uh, you would need to subtract that percentage from one. Uh, so just a total aside here, if there was a growth rate of 2%, remember 2% is 0 0.02. If it was growing, that would mean B equals 1.02, because you just add one to this. If it was decaying, like if your population was going down by 2%, uh, however many years, then you would say B is 0 0.98, because we would subtract it from one. We never use that percentage just as uh, your B value. Uh, at least not in population growth or decay questions. Anyway, that was a total aside. Let's move on to the next question. Solve the following exponential equation algebraically. So in other words, don't touch your graphing calculator on this one. We want to solve the exponential equation graphically. 
or sorry, algebraically. A couple of different ways of doing this one. I'll let you decide how you want to do it the most. Uh, give it a try. All right, I'm going to go over this now. I'll show you the way I would do this. I'm going to take care of this one the, the same old usual way that we first learned, and that's to make all of the bases of all the numbers here equal to the same thing. Uh, a really good base on all these, of course, would be 3. 81 is actually 3 to the power of 4. So I'm going to write that as 3 to the power of 4. Square root of 3 is 3 to the power of 0 0.5, because that's what a square root really is. It's just a, a, a fractional power. Uh, and that's going to be equal to 3 to the power of 2x minus 1. Now, since we have 3 to the power of 4 times 3 to the power of 0 0.5, those are two powers with the same base. We can add the exponents. So that's 3 to the power of 4.5 equals 3 to the power of 2x minus 1. And since now the only thing that's separating these two uh, equations or two sides of the equation uh, are the exponents, we can just drop the base altogether. We can ignore it and just say 4.5 must therefore equal 2x minus 1. So 4.5 equals 2x minus 1. Now we want to solve for x. This is just a standard linear equation. Add 1, divide by 2. So 5.5 equals 2x and then divide by 2. And you're going to find that x equals 2.75. Uh, if you want to verify that and plug it in, you're more than welcome to, but with exponential equations, you don't have to. With exponential equations, you're just fine. If this was a logarithmic equation, then you'd have to check your work, but on these ones, we're okay. All right, question three, write the logarithmic expression, that whole thing, as a single log, and then determine the value of that log. So in other words, we want to write it as a single log first, and then evaluate it. Uh, and to evaluate it, you can use your calculator on that one. It doesn't say you have to uh, algebraically do it. It's up to you. Anyway, give it a try. All right, I'm going to go over this one now. So first things first, writing it as a single log, that just basically means use your log laws. Uh, the ones I always take care of first are when we have a number out in front. Uh, when you have a number out in front in front of a log here, you can just take this number and then tack it onto the thing inside the log as an exponent. So the first step here is going to be log base 2 of 36 to the power of 1 half plus, well, this one's got nothing going on, so I'll just say it's log base 2 of 12. I'm just putting brackets in here just to separate a little bit a little bit better. I think it just looks nicer sometimes. Uh, anyway, minus, and then this 2 needs to come in on here. So it'll be log base 2 of 3 to the power of 2. Uh, next thing I'll do is I guess I'll evaluate all those little pieces. Uh, 36 to the power of 1 half, that's just the square root of 36. So this is really just log base 2 of 6 plus log base 2 of 12 minus log base 2 of three squared, which is of course just nine. Uh, from here on out, we just have these two to add together and then we have to subtract this one. Uh, notice in bed mass, addition and subtraction are the same steps, so you just move from left to right. Let's do these ones first. When you add two logs that have the same base, which they do, their base is two on both of them, uh, you just multiply the things inside uh, the log, right? It's just kind of backwards of the exponent laws. So we can say that this is really just log base two of six times 12, which is 72, minus log base two, of nine. Now when we subtract two logs that have the same base, we divide what's inside the logs. So we're just gonna go 72 divided by nine. That's gonna give us log base two of eight. Uh, so we've now written this as a single log. So that's the first part of our answer, but then it says determine the value of that logarithm. So here's where you have some options. You can throw this in your calculator. And to throw it in your calculator, especially if you have a TI-83, you're gonna to have to go just the regular log of eight divided by the regular log of two, because it's the uh, input divided by the base to get that to work. There, there is an identity on your formula sheet that explains that. So if you want to do that, go for it. Uh, for me, I'm going to be a little bit more bold. Notice we see log base 2 of 8. This is going to equal some number. I'm going to call that some number just x. That's what we're looking for. We want to see what this is equal to. Uh, rewriting this as an exponential function tells us that 2 to the power of x equals 8. Now, usually that wouldn't help us any. Usually we'd say, oh, well, now we have the x as an exponent. That's just making our life even worse. But not in this case. In this case, we see it's 2 to the power of something equals 8. Well, I know that x is going to be 3. 2 to the power of 3 is 8. So in other words, I have just determined algebraically that my exponent is, uh, is 3. Or in other words, that is what this log is equal to. You could have just done this step if you didn't want to go that fancy, whatever. Like, I, I really don't mind. Do it however you wish. All right, next one. Solve the following equation algebraically. So this is a logarithmic equation where you have a log equal to a log. Uh, I'll give you a, a few minutes to work on this one, of course. Just pause the video. Give it a try. All right, so I'm going to go over this one now. Uh, logarithmic equations are a little bit trickier, but it's the same essential idea uh, as dealing with an exponential uh, equation, right? Where you have two exponential functions on both sides. 
First things first, I want to write it as a single log on both the left side and the right side. The left side's just fine. Let's worry about the right side though. Notice we're adding two different logs with the same base. That means we can multiply the things that are inside the logs. So we're going to have log base six of 48 equals log base six of x plus seven times x minus one. Uh, you can write that out as like x plus seven times x minus one. For me, I'm going to go crazy on this one. I'm just going to multiply it through all together. So this is going to give me x times x is x squared. x times minus one is minus one x, but then we have plus seven times x, so plus seven x. Minus one x plus seven x gives us plus six x. Again, I'm just doing foil here really. Uh, and then plus seven times minus one, well that's minus seven. Uh, now that we have log base 648 equals log base six of this whole mess, uh, Hopefully what you can see is the log is really doing nothing now because we have the same log on both sides. Uh, so log base six of 48 equals log base six of this. Well, that just tells us that 48 must be equal to this whole thing here. That's the only way that log base six of two different things are gonna be the same thing. So we'll just drop the logs now. We'll say 48 equals x squared plus six x minus seven. Uh, and then, of course, this just looks like a standard quadratic. In order to solve for the solutions of a quadratic, we have to have this equal to zero. So let's minus 48 on both sides. Zero equals x squared plus 6x. Uh, and then minus 7 minus 48 is minus 55. So this is a little bit more of a complicated quadratic to solve. Um, but again, it is just the standard sum product rule. We're looking for two numbers with a sum of 6 and a product of negative 55. So you have to kind of start thinking through which two numbers would add to be six, but would multiply to be negative 55. How I always tackle this is I look at my product first and say, okay, what numbers could I multiply together to give me negative 55? Well, negative 55 is kind of hinting that it's gonna be like 11 and five, uh, and it's just a matter of determining which one's positive and which one's negative. With 11 and five, if you had positive 11 and negative five, that'll add to be positive six, and it would also multiply to be negative 55. So we're good there. We can just break this down now to zero equals x plus 11 times x minus five. Uh, and again, just to explain, hopefully, uh, hopefully you're still pretty familiar with that sum product rule. That was something we were supposed to have mastered by the end of uh, Math 20, but if you're still stuck on it, let me know, uh, and I can maybe toss you some resources on how to practice uh, the sum product rule. And remember, the adapted sum product rule where there's a number in front of the x squared, that's one that can come around as well, so make sure you're prepared for that. Uh, anyway, enough rambling. Let's solve this now. Since we have it factored, we can just look at each individual factor to see where it's equal to zero. So this times this equals zero. Well, that's only gonna be possible if either one of these was equal to zero. This piece here is gonna be equal to zero if we have x equal to negative 11. And this piece is gonna equal zero if we have x equal to positive five. Now, you might've heard me say it earlier, when you have a logarithmic equation, you have to always verify your solutions. And yes, I know it's a pain, um, but there are some cases where you won't actually have an answer that you get actually work. It'll just be like a dummy answer. It doesn't really work, okay? So off on the side here, I'm gonna do a verify. I'm gonna start with x equals negative 11. Uh, to verify, you just plug your x into the original thing, so into the thing that the question gave you. Don't plug it into anything else because that'll just you know falsify it for you. Plug it into the original thing to make sure it really works. So we wanna see if log base six of 48 equals log base six of negative 11 plus seven plus log base six of negative 11 minus one. I can tell you right now without even touching a calculator, that this is not going to work. Uh, and the reason I know that is negative 11 plus seven is like negative four, I think. Uh, and you cannot take the logarithm, any kind of logarithm uh, of a negative number. So since this is negative, and this one too, negative 11 minus one, that's negative 12, that's really negative, right? You can't take the logarithm of a negative number, so we can say right now, uh, this is not possible. And I can jump back to where it said x equals negative 11, and I can just cross it out. Don't erase it by any means, like I still wanna see that you found it, but just put a big x through it, just so I know that it doesn't work. Uh, now it's looking likely that, that this one's gonna work, but we should always check just to be sure. Uh, for x equals five, it's gonna be log base six of 48, equals log base six of five plus seven plus log base six of five minus one. Well, that's just gonna say log base six of 48. That's an eight there, awesome. Uh, equals log base six of 12 plus log base six of four. Uh, again, I can actually determine right now without even touching the calculator, this is going to work because I know uh, since we're adding two logs with the same base, 
you can just multiply the things inside the log and 12 times four is 48. So we can say that log base six of 48 equals log base six of 48. So those are the same thing on both sides of the equation. I just put brackets on that one for whatever reason. Uh, so yes, we verified that one does work. So let's put a box around this one. That one totally works. So the only solution on this uh, logarithmic equation is x equals five. All right, here we go. One more question. Uh, and this one is a little bit tough, but I do want you to give it a try. I want you to think this through. Even if it takes you like 10 minutes to piece it through, give it an honest shot. Uh, the first aftershock after an earthquake is usually 720 times less intense than the original earthquake. If an earthquake of magnitude 7.6 occurs, what would likely be the magnitude of the first aftershock to the nearest tenth? Uh, you can pause the video here and give it a try. The first thing I'm going to do, though, is I'm, I'm going to write down in just a second here what the general format would be. So if you want to try without it, you can pause right here. For those of you who have hung around, here's a general format. Remember, 10 to the power of m equals the intensity. That might get you started. If, uh, if you haven't already solved it, pause here and give it another shot. And now I'm fully going to go over this question. So hopefully, uh, one way or another, whether that hint helped you or not, here's how we're going to go about it. First things first, we want to find um, the magnitude of the first aftershock. So in other words, the magnitude of the second earthquake. The first aftershock would be our second earthquake. Let's focus on the first earthquake, the 7.6 one. 10 to the power of 7.6 is equal to your first intensity. I'll call it just I1. Uh, you could calculate that. It's going to give you a really, really big number. Uh, I don't bother because there's no point in writing it down. 10 to the power of 7.6 is a lot easier. Uh, so I just know that I, I1, my first intensity, uh, is 10 to the power of 7.6. Now, also, another thing we know is 10 to the power of M2, our second magnitude, is going to equal I2, our second intensity. Okay. Now, this equation right here is no use to us right now because we don't know either M2 or I2. If we knew one or the other, we'd be able to solve it. Like Clearly, if we knew M2, we could just throw it in a calculator like we could here and find what I2 is equal to. Uh, but we don't know that. What we do know, though, is that first aftershock is or sorry, 720 times less intense. So what we can say is I2, your second intensity, is your first intensity chopped into 720 pieces. Now, this might actually start helping us here uh, because, again, we know uh, what I1 is. I1 is just 10 to the power of 6. So, really, we could say it's 10 to the power, oh, not 10 to the power of 6, sorry, 10 to the power of 7.6 uh, divided by 720. So, that would give us a number for I2. So, this is I2. Now, I2 we know is equal to 10 to the power of M2. So, let's just combine all this together and write it as one statement 10 to the power of M2, your second magnitude. Uh, equals I2, which is 10 to the power of 7.6, divided by 720. Now, if you are more comfortable writing this as a singular number, you're more than welcome to. You literally can just go 10 to the power of 7.6 divided by 720 in your calculator. It's going to give you some horrible number, but if you're more comfortable dealing with a number like that rather than like a fraction, go for it. It's up to you. What I'm getting at here, though, is in this equation that I've just written down, the only thing that is missing is this magnitude. That means we theoretically should be able to solve this. Now, this is where we have our, our variable, of course, as an exponent, which kind of sucks because, you know, usually we try to make both sides have the same base. It's not going to be possible in this, in this case, but that's where logarithms come in. I would take this expression and I would turn it into a logarithm to be able to solve this problem. See how logarithms can be used to solve like the most obscure things? Let's give it a try. To turn this into a logarithm, let's start with our base. The base is going to be 10, so we're just going to use a regular log. I'm not even going to write the base of 10 here. I'm just going to write regular log because that's how, in just standard in math, that's how they do it. Uh, now, the input to the logarithm is the output to the uh, exponential function. So we have a normal log of 10 to the power of 7.6 divided by 720. And again, if you calculate that as an actual number, go for it. Like, whatever, it's the same thing. Uh, and then the output of the logarithm is equal to the input of your exponential function. So that's equal to M2. This piece right here, especially since it's just a normal regular log, this piece right here, you can throw it directly in your calculator and solve for it. So I'm going to solve real quick. M2 is equal to throw this in your calculator uh, and then round to the nearest tenth. You're going to find that M2 is equal to 4.7. Whew, so I told you it was tough. There very well may have been another way to go about this question. I wouldn't be surprised if you did find another way. You can send me an email if you wish just to let me know. Um, that's just the way that my mind worked through this question. 
Uh, and again, it's entirely up to you. Anyway, that was some pretty decent review today. For practice, any of the previously assigned practice questions, make sure you're doing them. Those textbook questions are not just for show. If you're not doing them, you're gonna have a very hard time here. Um, make sure you're getting those done. If you have any questions, please contact me, uh, especially if you uh, struggled with any of these questions today. If you struggled with the last one, don't, don't kick yourself too hard, but again, just have another look through it. Make sure you're understanding the process. Uh, anyway, uh, best of luck, guys. Talk to you soon.